Thank you, Chair. Thank you for attending. My first question is regarding your newsroom statement from the 4th of October regarding the social media platform X, providing you with a transparency notice on the measures they're taking to combat child sexual exploitation material. Is this the only transparency notice that has not been complied with? Thus far, yes. What um, there went, we, um, where we issued an infringement notice, we issued something called a service provider notification to Google through the same set of child sexual abuse material. Um, so the only other platform is Google, and, and that hasn't been issued with a transparency notice. Are there any others that, uh, like Telegram, Facebook? Um, Telegram does a lot we of are in the midst of a process um, around a series of very complex transparency notices around terrorist and violent extremist material. Um, Telegram is amongst them, and um, we're engaging with them. Telegram. Telegram, yes. Thank you. This thread asks about a subset of your work, material that is violent or distressing. Do you have a transparency portal where your instructions to social media platforms to take down such material is registered in as close as to real time as possible so we can see what you're censoring? We weren't set up as a, as a censor, uh, Senator. We have um, frameworks provided through complaint schemes. Um, members of the public report content to us, particularly when the social media platform or messaging platform hasn't responded. Um, with respect to um, illegal and harmful online content, we also have very well legally defined requirements, both notice powers under the criminal code and then removal notices under the Online Safety Act, um, formal removal notices, which we exercised against both X and Meta uh, during the Wakely terrorist incident. So, uh, and if I could, Senator, just sure. to explain how we um, achieve the objective of transparency in terms of our actions. Uh, you may know that the Online Safety Act requires us to publish under Section 183 of the Act uh, actions that we've taken in relation to a variety of harms. Uh, our annual report has been published. Annual you can what? find all of the information Your report on has been published. The annual report has been published, so we are required to report all of that information in the annual report. You can find that from page 223. Uh, it's append in the appendices that relate to the eSafety Commissioner. So that will show you all of the actions that we took for the financial year 23-24. Give us a bit of background on each one. Uh, no, there's no, it's, these are aggregated figures, so there's no <coughs> specific breakdown of each so individual no, matter. no breakdown and no opportunity for people to see how you're doing it? No, that would not just be, it would not be operationally feasible for us to report in real time the actions that we're taking. Parliament expected us to report on an aggregated basis about the uh, actions that we've taken, including requests, but we haven't broken them down. Just the for a range of just the aggregate numbers? The aggregate numbers for a range of operational purposes, including security and operational feasibility. So the platforms have to be transparent and you don't? Well, the platforms report on things in an aggregated way too, Senator. They're not reporting on each individual specific matter that they deal with. I mean, they deal with millions of matters uh, on a yearly basis. So, again, that just wouldn't be feasible for them to do so. But the platforms have to be transparent to you? Through the uh, exercise of our compulsory transparency powers under the basic online safety right. expectations. But they, it's important to note, Senator, that those transparency <laughs> powers are around how the platforms are meeting the expectations. We're not... Uh, extracting from them specific information about how they're dealing with this matter or that matter that might be reported to them. We're interested in understanding how they take user reports, for example, if they've got reporting schemes in place, how their terms and services and policies are developed to meet the objects of the basic online safety expectations. The most recent determination includes some measures in relation to generative AI, uh, how their companies are, are ensuring that those technologies aren't being used, for example, to produce child sexual abuse material on a synthetic basis. So that's the kind of information that we're drawing from the companies. We're not drawing information about how they're dealing with individual complaints. So the police force has long, held, long had transparency of the public through the court system. Now, whether you agree with the court system being perfect or not, that's not, not the point. But who, who, who do you go through to provide transparency? How can we assess what you're doing? So, Rather than in, just in the aggregate, so, Senator, of... when it comes to the principles of open justice, I mean the matters that the former police officer myself, uh, the matters that make their way to court represent a tiny fraction of all matters that are reported to police. 
the matters that are reported to police are not reported on an individual basis. There are strict privacy concerns, for example, that go to ensuring the uh, protection of complainants' identities and the specific matters that are reported to police forces. Uh, the Wakeley matter is a good analogous example of how... Sorry? The Wakeley matter, so the Section 109 notice that we issued to Twitter X, is a good example of how uh, that principle of transparency plays out in the federal court. The online file, for example, includes all of the evidence that the Safety Commissioner relied on uh, to make the case that uh, the uh, interlocutory um, measures uh, ought to be uh, accepted by the court. So the Senate is the House of Review. What facility exists for the Senate to review your takedown notices of material? Where's, where's the supervision of your activity? Who uh, oversees you? I, 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 th I think there are a few different um, ways. Well, one is through FOI, which you've exercised yourself, Senator. We've had a 2,288% uh, increase in FOIs over the past, um, over the past year. Um, but we are held accountable. Uh, we, we have reporting requirements. That includes for any informal actions we take. And, of course, we can be challenged um, in federal court. We can be challenged at the AAT or now the ART. We can be challenged um, by the ombudsman. And we can be um, – we can add a, a complaint that can ask for an internal review to be done. So there are a number of different ways that um, we can provide transparency when it is asked for or for, for required, required. But as uh, Mr. Dagg said, with 41,000 reports this year, and I, I think Mr. Downey, who is now running the investigations branch, is expecting at least 60,000 reports next year, it would operationally be infeasible and it would violate the privacy of the complainants. And as I said before, that confidentiality is important. Even young people understand <laughs> that um, one of the reasons children don't report cyberbullying is they don't want to be the dauber or the snitch, and they fear retribution. Um, so if we were to not treat some of these complaints as personal information, and the information commissioner agrees with us, uh, I think it would undermine trust in us as an organization. I get that. Doesn't the – what did you say, 2,000 percent increase in FOIs? Yeah, 2,288 percent. <laughs> percent increase. That's a huge increase. So it tell, tells me that people are hungry to learn more. Yes, and there have been some campaigns um, that have also encouraged people to um, put in FO FOIs, which we respond to. You, you've used um, the defence of having so many uh, infringements to take care of. That's a lot. Of, that's a big workload. What I'm interested in is not so much that, but how you're being held accountable. How how, how can we see see you transparently? What you're doing? Here we all are, Senator. Hmm. Well, I mean, what, what is the question <laughs> yes, that yes. you seek to ask? Uh, okay. Rather we, than we an call it estimates. We are at estimates, and, we have FOIs, uh, we and the have commissioner is here to answer your questions. And so, if there are particular themes that you're interested in, you really should ask her. What about the public? Well, they need to know. You are their happening. representative, as you so That's often correct. remind us. You are you a, a you are humble place. servant of the people of Queensland. <laughs> if I can go to Freedom of Information 24118, where it was asked for any guidelines you have in regards to the implied right to political communication, to make sure you aren't infringing on it as you issue takedown notices, I note that your Freedom of Information decision says, quote, there are no dedicated guides or policies with respect to the interaction of the implied right of political communication and used by the e-safety commissioner or personnel who implement the various schemes under the, under the OSA. No dedicated guides or policies? Senator, the need to assess each and every action we take through the lens of whether or not the implied constitutional right of uh, the implied constitutional right to political uh, communication is infringed is just operationally infeasible. So you're saying you to hell with the Constitution? No, not at all. The uh, concern that a particular uh, person's interest may have been infringed in such a way as to raise a claim that uh, the operation of the Online Safety Act is invalid is absolutely a matter that can be pursued through uh, merits review, uh, through judicial review. But to the Commissioner's point, we are going to be dealing with 60,000 uh, complained URLs this year which produce a significant percentage of actions we take. I'm sure you can understand that 
rigorously assessing whether or not they raise any specific issues in relation to the implied constitutional right makes it very difficult for us to uh, make rapid decisions in line with the thresholds set by the Act. I think it's important to note that the Act contains very clear thresholds and very clear uh, parameters for us to apply in terms of operational decision making. Uh, the Act itself, as you would have seen, is supported by a bill which was subject to exhaustive uh, human rights review in its construction. Uh, we believe that by properly administering the Act on behalf of the Commissioner, uh, we're taking actions which are in line with Parliament's expectations. If a person believes that the constitutional uh, right, the implied right, has been infringed, there are avenues for review of that decision. We're going to need to rotate the call, Senator Roberts. Yeah. I can't see how bypassing the Constitution and not including it as a consideration is, is in any way OK. The e-safety commissioner and the delegates ordinarily... <coughs> excuse me, this is more further quote. The e-safety commissioner and their delegates ordinarily proceed on the basis that the powers given to them under the OSA by the Australian Parliament are reasonably appropriate and adapted. So you don't turn, to mind, turn, turn your mind to whether you're acting constitutionally at all, you just assume you are. How can this Senate be convinced that you are able to act within the Constitution when you don't even have a document outlining a fundamental right of Australians to communicate on political matters? If you, if you breach someone's constitutional rights, then they, then they complain? That's it? The Senator, as you know, the constitutionality of any piece of legislation that comes before the Parliament the is quite frequently a matter of some discussion. And I think, um, you know, and Till, unless you seek to challenge it, I think we can assume that the legislative framework within which the Commissioner and her staff operate is constitutional. That's right. a misrepresentation of what I said, Minister. I'm not saying that, that the, uh, the, the Act is unconstitutional. I'm saying that the consideration to take down someone needs to be uh, to maintain constitutional rights, and particularly the political... I think the two things are interconnected, okay. Senator, because the powers that are exercised by um, the Commissioner and the staff that work with her are enabled by the Parliament and by the I legislation that. That, that, that they work within. And as I have indicated to you already, that is subject to well, often a discussion among Senators about constitutional arrangements. That still doesn't answer the question. The Senator right Roberts, I'm going to move on. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. Senator Sharma. Um, uh, Chair, um, may I make a request that we respond to uh, some of the issues around the Constitution and the constitutionality? Um, Absolutely. Would you like to do that now, or would you like to do that in writing? I would like to do that in writing. Thank you. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. you could do that on notice. Okay. 